there's all kinds of different tools and different things that we can get for soldering. Now, what are the things that you're going to use the most and what are the things that are going to be most valuable to you? It's going to depend on what type of soldering you're doing and how often you're going to solder. So let's take a look at some of the top tools that I use when I do some soldering. This is a brass wire soldering tip cleaner. And if you don't have one of those, you need to get one of these right away. These things are going to help keep your tip clean and remove oxidation. You can also use one of these yellow cleaning sponges to clean your soldering off, but most people don't actually use these things correctly. You're really just supposed to really quick, lightly touch this thing once or twice to shock oxides off of it. When you drag the soldering iron or tap the soldering iron repeatedly onto the pad, you're going to lose a lot of heat. And when that happens, the station, the soldering station or pen is going to try to heat up really quickly. And most of the time it's going to overshoot the set point, which isn't ideal because now you're increasing the temperature above what you're trying to have it set up. Another nice thing to have is a silicone mat. And this mat's gonna protect the surface of your table or whatever you're working on in case solder splashes on to the table. And it's really easy to remove the solder off of silicone and the silicone can take pretty high temperatures. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to have in your toolbox are different types of soldering tips. And the reason you want different types of soldering tips is so you can do different solder jobs and so that you can effectively transfer heat onto the work. Now I recommend always getting solder tips from a good company. I'll put a couple recommendations in the description of the video. Now let's go over what the different types of tips can be used for. So one of the most common types of tip you have is the conical cone shaped tip. It's used for general work. You can come at at different angles, uh, different sides to the component and still transfer heat. So it's a pretty good general all around tip. Then you have the chisel style tip. All right, this one's typically good for higher surface areas. So think uh, pads on a PCB board or even connecting stranded wire, braided wire. Then you have the bevel tip. Um, this one I don't recommend for beginners. You know, this is really once you start getting into surface mount soldering and you're doing drag soldering and things of that nature. And then last we got the knife tip, which I don't use these very often, but you can use these to get rid of solder bridges pretty well. There's a couple other specialty purposes of why you might want to use the knife tip. So another thing to think about when you're soldering is do you want to have some sort of holder, uh, board holder? So there's, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Here's a just a really affordable one that you can get. And if you're real attentive, you can notice the same holder being used by Tony Stark in Iron Man 2. This holder's nice because it has these magnetic helping hands and you can stick them on any sort of ferrous metal. So that's kind of nice. The base is really solid. The one thing I hate is the way that the, the clips connect to the, uh, the movable arms. They're just, they're kind of flimsy. But besides that, I'd say it's pretty good. And I use this one for a lot of different projects. One thing I don't like about it is that the arms aren't as stiff as I'd prefer. The base is solid and it won't tip over like this other one. And finally, this pan of ice. This is more of a commercial grade holder. So it works really well. It's really solid. It's pretty easy to take the board in and out. The nice thing is you can put a lot of pressure on this and it doesn't move, it doesn't change position. You can also hold your iron and you can put a spool of solder on there. It's got some places for either components or sponges. So, you know, that, that that's optional stuff, right? It's nice to have, they have different footprints depending on the size of your work station. But all those things are things you want, want to think about. This is good for, I would say, a lot of makers and people who want to do hobby projects. Uh, this is more commercial grade thing. All right, this is a huge key to being successful in soldering. So many people make this mistake. They think, oh, solder is solder. No, it's not. There's different types of solder and you need to know and understand what you're using. Okay, on the right, I have two different types of lead-free solder, often referred to as ROHS solder. This does not have lead in it. It is primarily tin, 99% tin, a little bit of silver, and a little bit of copper. This is what a lot of online kits come with. And, you know, most people will agree that this type of solder is harder to use and harder to learn with than leaded solder. Um, the reason this exists is primarily because there's a push to get rid of things that can be environmentally dangerous. When you're working with leaded solder, you need to wash your hands after you use this. You don't have to worry about lead fumes or anything like that. Your soldering iron doesn't get that hot. 
Now I recommend having both types of solder. And if you're gonna get a lead-free solder, just make sure you get one from a quality name brand company. There's different types out there, different formulations, and it gets a little nuanced, but all in all, if you can find a good quality supplier, and I'll put a couple of recommendations in the description, but find a, someone that you trust that has a good, clean lead-free solder. And it's this is going to be most important. The quality of the solder is going to be most important for lead-free solder because it can be the most difficult to work with. But if you get good lead-free solder, it is workable. This is my leaded solder. This is These are both 60-40 leaded solder. And that's going to be the most common formulation you're going to run across. Now, if I can make a recommendation, if you can get eutectic solder, I recommend getting that instead of 6040. The reason is eutectic solder melts at a single temperature. So with non-eutectic solder, you actually have a range at which there's this mixture region, some people call it a plastic region, but where there's both solid and liquid alloy present. Practically what that means is eutectic solder is gonna solidify faster and the end result of your solder joint is gonna look better. Now, I always recommend having two different sizes of solder getting a smaller diameter solder and a larger diameter solder. If you can only get one, get the smaller diameter solder. It's always good to have a little bit of rosin paste flux around. And now most solders nowadays, you're gonna buy them and they're gonna have flux in them. They're gonna be flux core solders. So as you use your solder as you're soldering, what's gonna happen is that flux is gonna attack oxidation on the metals that you're soldering onto. Now, as you do that, you're burning off the flux and the fumes you see the smoke you see when you're soldering is actually the fumes from the rosin flux and that stuff is kind of hazardous so you want to you don't want to breathe that in you want to avoid that as much as possible but as you solder you're burning off flux and that's removing oxidation and if you are soldering the same place or the same using the same solder for too long what can happen is you can burn off all the flux or if you're doing rework and you're trying to remove some oxidation, you may wanna have a little extra flux around to add back into the soldering process. All right, that brings me to my next piece of soldering equipment. You need some way to evacuate the smoke that's happening while you're soldering. Okay, so you want some type of fan to either blow the smoke away from your face or something that can extract the smoke into a carbon filter, something that's going to help reduce your exposure to the burned flux. Now, I personally recommend soldering in an open air area like a garage or some space like that. If you're going to solder inside your house, you, may, you want to make sure you have a really good system for removing the fumes. It's always a good idea to check out the MDS sheets of your specific type of solder and flux so you can know how to handle the chemicals that you're dealing with. Another great thing to have is capped tape. Captain tape is great for electronics because it can take high temperatures. So you can put it near things that you're soldering and it should hold up pretty well. It also doesn't leave a lot of nasty residue, so you can use it to hold things in place when you need to. It can also come in handy to have a brush around, so having something to clean off oxidation, if there's a lot of grime or something built up on to a board or something of that nature, or to be able to clean up, clean up after soldering, maybe remove some flux from the board if you used a lot, then something like this can come in handy. Another thing you're going to want to have on hand is some solder wick or some way to remove solder, such as the solder vacuum. I prefer the wick. With the wick, what you got to do is you have to bring that, the wick in near the solder you want to remove, transfer enough heat to the wick to get it to wet, to get the solder to wet. Now, a lot of times this can be difficult, especially with certain types of tips. So if you're struggling to get enough heat, you're not getting the solder to melt, I recommend bringing in a little bit of solder on the other side to try to get enough thermal linkage to, to wet or heat up the solder on the other side. Some other things you're going to want to have on hand are other types of wire cutters and clippers, as well as different types of tweezers, a couple Q-tips possibly, and some sort of optics to inspect your solder joints. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can find my recommendations in the description, but also consider checking out some of our other videos and subscribing.